What's up, YouTube? This video is going to be about Dr. Eric Berg. Hey guys, Dr. Berg here. If you've already been following Dr. Berg, then you should definitely watch this video till the end. Hold your biases and look at this with a completely open mind. Dr. Eric Berg is not a traditional medical doctor, he is a chiropractor. Now, I'm not attacking his credentials in any way because the only important thing according to me is providing the right information to the public. And in that context, credentials mean squat. But with that being said, whatever information this guy is preaching about is probably not something he got from his education as a doctor. That's still okay as long as all the information he's providing is accurate except that it's not. For you, I want to talk about the difference between burning calories in general and burning fat calories. Isn't the goal to burn fat calories? This is not just about one bogus video he's made. It's a total high-level analysis and breakdown of some of the basic fundamentals that he gets wrong in a lot of his videos. And there's so many of these that I don't think just one video could cover it all. Number one, he thinks that eating less calories to lose weight is a myth. If you cut calories, you do not have a dramatic effect on the fat cell. If you cut sugar, you'll cut insulin that you will have an effect on the fat cell. If you lower insulin by cutting sugar out, you will lose weight. Okay, so we want to starve your body not of calories but of the sugar to drop the insulin which forces your body to burn fat. If you eat less, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to lose weight. He's a big time believer of the carb insulin model which suggests that a high level of insulin in your body is what causes weight gain because insulin is the anabolic hormone that stores fat in your body. So he believes that when you cut out the macronutrient that causes the highest spike in insulin, which is carbohydrates, you automatically start losing weight. The main problem with this model is that it's not able to explain how a high-carb, low-fat diet also produces the same result of weight loss with calories equated, and how athletes and natural bodybuilders eat a shitload of carbs but still continue to lose fat and even manage to bring their body fat levels to sub-10% while eating carbs on a regular basis. You know, I always recommend having at least one fruit source like a banana, and then I also like to include some berries. So these are the macros for the meal. It's also been tested that a keto diet causes weight gain on a calorie surplus, which technically shouldn't be happening if the carb insulin model were correct. The carb insulin model of obesity has been debunked many times by real scientists, but there's a whole cult that still sticks to this model, and Dr. Berg is one of them. I think the combination of these two studies on the metabolic side of things basically falsified the carbohydrate insulin hypothesis. Now, I'm not against keto, paleo, vegan, or any kind of specific diet, and I'm not against intermittent fasting either, because I understand that different diets work for different people. But what you need to understand is that whatever you eat, it all boils down to calories in versus calories out at the end of the day when it comes to gaining or losing weight. Calories in, calories out. That's the number one thing you need to do to lose weight. In fact, it's the only thing you need, as in you must do, to lose weight. To lose weight, you need to be in a calorie deficit regardless of the diet you're following. But Dr. Berg preaches that when you do keto and intermittent fasting, the calories don't matter. And that's a problem. You can um, have it as much as you want, and it's actually very, very healthy for you. And just so you know, you can have this as much as you want. It will not cause weight gain. See, there's a difference between burning fat and losing it. Keto does make you burn fat for fuel, but it's still the calorie deficit that makes you lose the fat from your body. Another thing the keto gurus like Dr. Berg won't tell you is that your excess dietary fat does not require insulin to be stored as body fat, which means that on keto, you will store body fat on a caloric surplus regardless of the fact that your insulin levels are low. Number two, if you stick around him for long enough, he will convince you that all nutritional science is flawed or even rigged because corporate America is somehow conspiring against you. Talk about vitamin companies' dirty little secrets, okay? Well, these people are not stupid. I think they just have to define it like this because of the food manufacturing companies and the chemical companies behind them are really uh, pulling the strings, okay? The sugar industry paid off a key researcher from Harvard University 50 years ago to downplay the relationship between dietary sugar and heart disease and put the blame on dietary fat. Most, if not all, the studies that show this link 
are sponsored by the food industry. Surprise! We are being hit from every angle of research data being manipulated and camouflaged as this uh, credible evidence-based science. But I think the worst of the worst is that industry is allowed to cherry-pick their data and not have to publish the studies that don't align with what they want. Fortunately, what we're missing in science is this thing called ethics. What's missing in healthcare? It's the health part. I know it's ironic. You go to the doctor, you get healthy, but there's really no health there. After enough of brainwashing, through multiple videos, once you're convinced that the entire world is lying to you about everything, you will start believing anything he tells you. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Well, I do agree that large corporates do a lot of shitty things to make profits in America, but he uses this as an excuse to ignore all the real scientific data and resorts to fear-mongering to push his own agenda. If you do the higher carbohydrates with all the flexibility of eating all the different food groups, you're going to gain weight and have a lot of health problems. Plus, you're always going to be hungry and you're going to be craving the wrong foods. And if you consume fruit and check your blood sugars and you go, wow, it didn't affect my blood sugars, it must be good. What you're missing is that all that fructose is going to the liver and the liver has to deal with it. And if you do too much, it could lead to insulin resistance, which will raise insulin. So if the liver has to deal with too much fructose, it has to put it somewhere so it converts it to to fat and cholesterol and triglycerides. At first, when Dr. Berg wasn't so popular on YouTube, he started some of his videos on a light note by sharing what he called his own opinion and viewpoint. In this video, I wanna share my opinion on do we need carbohydrates? Okay, so now there's going to be a lot of different viewpoints that people are going to talk about. I'm just going to give my two cents. I don't want to get in an argument with anyone, but whatever works for you, go ahead and go for it. Then, as he got more and more popular, he started pushing the same opinions as facts over multiple videos. Man, I just need more carbs to boost my energy. Really? Have you ever heard that before? He even started preaching on how to argue with friends and family members. And we're gonna talk about what to say to your friends and family members who keep pushing these carbohydrates on you that tell you you need more carbohydrate to increase your energy. And that's how his fear-mongering strategy was put in place to ensure that his viewers won't dare try anything that he personally doesn't approve of. So I had a question from someone that wanted to know what is healthier, consuming rice or wheat? So obviously that person has not been watching my keto videos too much. One of the problems consuming white rice is that you develop something called beriberi, which is a vitamin B1 deficiency, uh, neuritis, so any nerve pain in your body. Also, it's gonna create edema and swelling and increased pulse rate, memory problems, all sorts of problems with blood sugars. If you're living in America, 60% of samples tested had traces of arsenic. Arsenic um, is a, a poison. Wheat doesn't have arsenic. Wheat has glyphosate. Let's see, what's better, arsenic or glyphosate? Now, who could imagine eating rice or wheat after seeing this? In 2007, Dr. Berg was reprimanded for using bogus techniques in his practice while also making tall claims that weren't supported by any scientific or medical evidence and had to pay a fine of $1,500. So it looks like he's been doing this for a while now. Number three, he argues that anyone who thinks that doing keto and intermittent fasting doesn't work for them is either doing it wrong or hasn't given it enough time. Dr. Berg assumes that every adult in the world is either insulin resistant or a diabetic by default. He ignores all outliers and promotes a one-size-fits-all strategy. It's one thing to argue that keto is the best diet, but Dr. Berg argues that you've got no other choice if you want to stay healthy. We always have a choice. He demonizes carbohydrates so much that he actually makes a huge effort over several videos preaching that diabetes, fatty liver, cancer, heart disease, cirrhosis, Alzheimer's, you name it, is all caused by carbohydrates. Do you realize how much money is connected to carbohydrates? He will blame all your life problems on carbohydrates. Why is it when something happens, it is always you three? It's the carbohydrates. <laughs> Why are you doing this, Lori? It's the carbohydrates. And the global solution for all these problems is... Keto and intermittent fasting, okay? The reason that intermittent fasting happens to work for a lot of people without having to count calories is that many of them seem to naturally consume less calories during their eating window, thereby unknowingly creating a natural calorie deficit. Since a high-fat keto meal is also pretty decent in protein, it keeps some people satiated and unknowingly prevent 
prevents them from going overboard on calories in their feeding window. And these people are probably the ones that worship Dr. Berg because it works for them. However, there are outliers for whom this does not work. It's not working. And they end up eating more calories after their fast and fail to lose weight. Being the outlier, you never manage to reach your final goal and you keep relying on his program while yo-yo dieting and thinking that you're always doing something wrong to not see the expected results. And there are very specific reasons why you might not be losing your belly, okay? Let's start with number one, not doing it correctly. You wanna bring your carbs down to 20 grams per day, maybe even less. Number two, you're not doing intermittent fasting, you're only doing keto. If you have a fatty liver, the capacity to, to make ketones, the, the capacity to make growth hormone work is gonna be less. And the capacity to rid the fat's gonna be less. So you're gonna have to improve this fatty liver. You end up second guessing yourself thinking, did I not fast for long enough? Did I somehow break my fast without realizing it? Or did I somehow exceed my carb limit for the day when all this is not even important or even relevant in the context of losing weight? There is nothing more frustrating then doing all the right things to try to lose weight and it doesn't work. You know, your spouse loses weight or your friends are losing weight, but you're not. The only real underlying reason for not losing weight would be that you're in a calorie surplus or at maintenance and you would never know that on his program. Put that cookie down! Now! And that's actually good for him because you keep watching his channel. Otherwise, you'd have better things to do in life. Well, that's all the time we have for this video, but I do have a lot more serious stuff to say about Dr. Berg, so don't forget to watch my part 2 video. Stay subscribed, and in the meantime, do feel free to shit on me all you want in the comment section.